having really enjoyed Hallmark's first Christmas in Evergreen film, I was really keen to check out some of the sequels. And the second one, Letters to Santa, was currently on Amazon Prime, so I thought, let's give it a go. I really did enjoy this film as a film on its own. However, as a sequel to the first Christmas in Evergreen, I thought it was, first of all, not as good, but then sequels usually never are, um, but also lacking in connection. And the first thing that I kind of noticed is that the cast was different, and I thought that was a bit of a shame, because I was looking forward to following the characters' progressions and seeing what they were up to now. So that was the first disappointment. But once I got over that, I did enjoy the characters we had. I'll talk about them more in a moment. Um, the other thing is that it doesn't really hype up Evergreen as much as the first film. In the first film, I won't give you any spoilers for the narrative specifics, but in the first film, there's a lot of love for Evergreen. There's this constant bigging up of Evergreen, and you feel like you're fully aware of the village and the people who live there. In this film, while Evergreen was kind of mentioned a little bit, there wasn't really that same sentiment or that love and devotion for the village as a whole. So I feel like it was really lacking in being an Evergreen sequel. However, the film on its own, if we forget for a second that it's a sequel, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Lisa goes back to Evergreen and she meets somebody, as she would with any Hallmark film, called Kevin. And... They keep bumping into each other and eventually they join forces to try and restore this old general store that's in disrepair and is at risk of being sold to a, a superstore, a chain store, something that could significantly ruin the homely, close-knit feel of Evergreen. And the majority of the film is them just getting this place ready and getting it set up all nice and festive to attract buyers. Um, while also building their relationship, because it is a Hallmark rom-com. I liked it. Obviously, it's like pretty much every other Hallmark film. It's nothing surprising, it's not spectacular, it's not unpredictable. Expect what one would expect from Hallmark. But it's nice, and I think the reason it works is because we have a decent cast. So, before I forget, it's directed by Sean McNamara and written by Zach Hugg, based on the story by Rick Garman. And our protagonist, Lisa, is played by Jill Wagner, and I think she did a brilliant job. She was a very likeable protagonist, easy to get on with. At no point did she seem obnoxious or ungrateful. Often that can happen to a Hallmark character before they go on their journey to personal discovery and development. But she was likeable from, from the off, really. Kevin, as a love interest and protagonist, I liked. He's played by Mark Declan, and... I thought he did a great job on screen. They have a great chemistry. I think they work really well together. I apologize if you hear my cat who's just run into the cupboard. She's having a mad half hour, a very untimely mad half hour. Um, I really like the film. I recommend it. It's not, as I said, a brilliant sequel to Christmas and Evergreen. I don't feel like it's as magical or as cozy or as close knit. But it had some positive points and I'm not put off. I will watch the next sequels as soon as. I don't believe they're currently on Amazon Prime in the UK. But as soon as possible, I'm going to give them a watch because Letters to Santa was not that bad.